So, why? What? What is? What? Why would someone chase power? Why? Well, very simply, because power, what does power mean? Power means control. So, why is power a goal in many ways? Power is a goal in Machiavelli because power means control, control of all these dangerous elements that surround the person. This is why how tyrants are born. And this is why tyranny is never settled, it's, it's always restless, as, as Plato explained and as Stalin showed, for example. The, the, the tyrant can never be safe. Because dangers, you know, you, you eliminate one danger, well then there's, a, there's, there's the other guy, the next danger. There's the guy you sent to kill the the dangerous person, well, suddenly he's too powerful for you, so you kill, you kill your soldier. And then, wait a minute, you don't do it yourself, right? You send someone else. Well, this guy you send the third time, himself is dangerous. It's a never-ending chain of insecurity. You use people, but, you know, the more you use people, the more they get closer to you, that makes them your rivals. And, and what I'm describing is actually, you know, uh, for example, the Soviet Union doing stuff. You know, there were continuous purges of the people at the highest echelons, people who supported Stalin, for example. Why he, was he continuously wiping them out? And some of them were the brilliant, most brilliant commanders in the army, for example, right? And then the army was left um, vulnerable to the Nazis, for example. Why did he do that? Because you can never be safe. Because the idea, if, the, if this is the world, right? if this is the world, when will the human being completely control the elements? Never. 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 So, this is why Machiavelli said was, you know, go, use whatever means possible. Obviously, you know, with cunning, right? So you don't just, for example, he says, well, there's this uh, city that didn't belong to you, and there's the, the, the family, and the people there actually were, let's say, a republic before, so they will not be sent to you. What do you do? You send in a commander, not yourself, who uh, will then be very brutal. So immediately at the beginning he will be very brutal, he will cut down all those who might oppose, not oppose, he will be just ruthless and brutal and bloody. The people will be cowed, but they will also hate that commander you sent. They also, by proxy, hate you. Well, how do you then go to the next step of actually taking control of that city? Well, you execute the commander who you sent. You go into the city at night, arrest and execute this commander, and then post his dismembered body on the public gates and tell everyone, you just learned about what just happened, and you came to make justice. And suddenly you are the savior, but the people are already, already cowed into submission. But guess what? That's literally what happened uh, in my example of, of Soviet Union under uh, Stalin, where the, the head of the Soviet police of the NKVD um, um, was who participated in one of the most brutal waves of purges, millions of people being killed yeah, during the 1930, between 1936 and 38. In 38, he himself disappeared, right? Disappeared, right? Because that's how you do it. And in the public, many people said, well, Stalin, this is happening because Stalin surely doesn't know what's going on. Right? So, these are real, you know, uh, examples of how, how, how such things go. So, uh, but says, you go in, you take over the, the control of the city, after you have killed that commander you sent in to, to make order, what do you do? You keep, you know, keep being brutal? No then you keep building a base and maybe pass some laws that are good. So here's the other thing which scholars talk about in Machiavelli that, you know, we can't just look at, uh, you know, we have to see the other side. What was Machiavelli trying to achieve? Clearly he was despairing of the continuous instability, existential insecurity, which was linked to political insecurity in the Italian peninsula. And there was an awareness of an Italian-ness of, of, so, of sorts. So, he, you know, in, in the end of Friends, he talks about the fact that you, Lorenzo, you, the Medici Prince, from the family of the Medici, you should use these tools to, to, to unite Italy, which, again, didn't exist, as a, as a fact, but to unite this peninsula and actually create stability. So there's this yearning for stability 
And, and in many ways, the goal of the prince is power, glory, both for himself, in, according to what uh, Machiavelli describes, but also for the city, for the state itself. So there's a yearning for stability, there's an idea that this, this quest for absolute power is also a source of stability. Now this, you'll see, is, is, is hints later, or you'll see connections perhaps with Hobbes, with Hobbes later, who, who writes, uh, you know, quite a few centuries later, but writes from a similar perspective. And it's not by chance that in the, in the sphere of uh, scholarship in uh, what is called the field of international relations, Thucydides, Machiavelli, Hobbes are together considered to be inspirers of this school of quote unquote realism. Even the word realism is chosen to say that well, this is how the world is. So, in conclusion, what did Machiavelli, you know, did, remember these two concepts? Fortuna describing the disorder of the world and making it the order of the world. What Machiavelli says is that he, 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 because he forgets the, 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 the measure of the good, right? Which in the Christian, the Judeo Christian world was, was God, it's only this world which I see is fallen. There is no hope anymore, it's bleak. The second to see this, uh, it's bleak. So that's, that he calls fortuna. It's this unbridled, unstoppable, irrational ensemble of forces. Just to make a short note, how about the human nature? Well, the human nature, <laughs> his view of humans was unsurprisingly, you know, very much according to this. Right? He was, he kept, uh, he, he, uh, his impression was that human beings are selfish, driven only by desires, uh, and they only listen to violence, <laughs> basically. Um, so that gives you a sense of, and most of all, untrustworthy. And the fact that human beings are untrustworthy is key because it shows you that Fortuna is applies on also to human relationships. They can never be controlled because you can trust no one, including your family, including the closest people. That's the essence of... This shows you this, the tragedy, the sadness of this, you know, of this view. And why does he have this view? that matches the view of a tyrant in Plato, of, of a Stalin, right? You can trust no one. Yeah. Why? Because he sees only the disordered part and cannot see the fact, uh, the ordered part in the world, the meaning part in the world. However, he tries to make meaning of it, right? So, you know, he, he, he says the whole world is disordered, this is the order, the order of the world is disordered. This is what the Athenians say in the meaning of that. We are invading and I'm going to wipe you out because remember this is how the million dollar ends, which is real, real events. The Athenians take over the, the island of Melos and kill all men and enslave all women and children. Why? In the dialogue that is documented, that Thucydides is documented, why do they do that? Because they say this is how things work. Right? This is how things work. Of course, the Athenians themselves will lose and then they will die. So, you know, when we read about all these things, it's, we barely know about these things, right? We barely know. Nobody, everybody has forgotten these things. But at the, at the moment, they seem to be so, you know, important. What I'm trying to say is that the Athenians themselves are dust, just like the prince is dust. So, what does he really achieve, you know? What does he really achieve? Right? What does a tyrant really achieve? Because one thing he cannot control is death. <laughs> yeah? More powerful than Fortuna. Right? In this sort of a perspective. But this is not uh, obviously the perspective of Plato, not an, of an Aristotle, because he would say this is not life according to a human being, it's to Augustine, Aquinas, where human being, they look beyond this world. Right? Not in the realm of fairies and fantasies, but to the things that last. Right? And they say, this is just a temporary situation in a disorder world, but there is also order. There is also order. And you as a human being can choose. Right? So, uh, this, this is really what I wanted to talk about. Fortuna, Vir2, what Vir2 is, what Fortuna is, and your, book, your textbook has it there, but I wanted to kind of clarify it, hopefully, a little bit. 
and maybe uh, and so that you have a context for what Fortuna meant, what Virtu meant, and where Machiavelli is coming from, and why is he similar later with Hobbes than with the citizen? Why is he so different from uh, the other thinkers that we have uh, discussed? Again, it's a brief introduction. Later on, hopefully, you will take classes in political philosophy, uh, perhaps with me, and then you can go more deep into these issues. I welcome your questions, my email, um, and um, you will have a discussion section on Augustine Aquinas.